Okay, so I wanted to show some love to the Raspberry Pi 400, which at this moment is the only readily available Pi, and it's available from Amazon and also official stockists, and the price is actually pretty decent. I'll go on about the price in a minute and have a look about who's got it in stock. But the first thing I wanted to show, so this is 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, it's the KDE version that I showed in my last video, and I'm absolutely loving this operating system. And uh, I had a question about whether it works on the Pi 400. Yes, it definitely does, and I'll show some more of it in a minute. Um, but uh, what I wanted to show was how YouTube is finally fixed on the Raspberry Pi. So in this OS, I have 20 drop frames out of 107,000, uh, and it's still going up. And uh, it's been playing this one video, uh, which is one of my FIFA videos, at 1080, 30 FPS, and it is absolutely fine. So let's quit out of that and show you that uh, the operating system works well as well. So if I press the Windows key, uh, and I move through all the applications and things. It is nice and swift. Everything is, is really smooth. Uh, so I'm running this overclocked. Uh, so if I do Control alt t to show the terminal, and let's have a look at NeoFetch. So this is exactly the same operating system I was using on my eight gig Pi, uh, but obviously in this case, it's four gig, uh, and it's running at 2147 on this Pi 400. You can see it reports at 22. It's been up and running for an hour and 13 minutes. And, oh, I didn't have a look and see how long that FIFA video had been running for. Will it show me if I go back into it? Uh, will it resume from where I got onto? Uh, I have noticed as well, this clipboard is, is brilliant in this OS. So it goes back to uh, various different things you've copied and pasted. So I've got all my install script here. Uh, I've got a GitHub link that I was checking because there was an update on the bootloader. There's all sorts of things show up here. And I really like this system. Uh, so it's not showing up on there. But if I go to uh, history and yeah, play old FIFA online. So if you if you right click and uh, select all and then copy that, you'll see that it shows up in here and it stays in there for quite a while. You can see uh, yeah here uh, and you can do you can even do something really clever, uh, which is to show a QR code. And if you hold your device over the QR code, it picks it up and you tap on the link and it will take you straight to that video or link or whatever you've copied uh, will be copied over. I think that's really quite impressive. A few more things I really liked about the OS. Uh, so if you drag uh, one of the windows to the side, you can see it either goes in top corner, bottom corner, uh, or you can have it just filling up one side. I'm just getting used to where it happens. Yeah, so you can see that's half. Uh, and then I could do this one as full screen, but I can also do it as just top corner. And to say I called up the folders as well, uh, obviously it'd be sensible to put it down the bottom there. So let's drag it down. And when that little box shows up, release it. And you can see that it comes up like that. And obviously I can do show desktop and I can bring that back in. But uh, if I do a web search, say hot UK deals, you can see that it comes up. And I've been definitely impressed with the performance. How do I get this to go full? Oh, there you go. So if you kind of drag it to the middle, it becomes the dominant pop-up. I like that. Uh, and then drag it. So it's just a case of getting used to where you drag it as to where it creates. So in the middle, top, uh, but also if you drag it to the middle, it goes full screen. Yeah, I really like that. And it, and as you can see, if I scroll through the page, uh, it scrolls really nicely. It's a bit slower because I'm, uh, I'm on a Bluetooth mouse at the moment. Because I'm using a Pi 400, it means it doesn't take up an extra USB socket. One thing I liked as well was uh, on the right hand side here, if you were to pick something you've installed, now I haven't installed a lot on here, uh, and have I installed anything by, yeah, so transmission I guess I've installed. So you can see here, uninstall or manage add-ons. Transmission is a torrent downloader. Uh, and you can see that it comes up with the option uh, to be able to uninstall that app. So you can see remove or launch the app. I really like that. It's just a, a logical way of being able to delete things and find them very quickly. Uh, I've definitely found that um, the App Store was nice to use uh, and you know, clicking on it, it shows you a little bit about it, gives you a review, gives you uh, all sorts of information, much, much better than the standard one in Raspberry Pi OS. That said, it's still worth having the add remove one, uh, which comes with Raspberry Pi OS, because this is guaranteed to work on the Pi. You'll definitely some find, sometimes find these apps don't always work, don't always launch because they're for x86 Linux, whereas on the Raspberry Pi store, as you can see, it always takes its time to load up. Uh, it actually only shows you stuff that's gonna work. So that's a good 
plus point for keeping uh, the standard Raspberry Pi OS app store in there. But I've got that store and I've also got the uh, Synaptic store as well. So I've got all sorts of ways of installing apps on here. And again, if I just drag this over, I can resize it. And I'm getting used to where all the folders go. So if I was to click on that one and then go down to this bottom corner, oh no, I didn't quite do it. Uh, bottom, yeah, a bit lower down. There you go. So you can manage it really quite nicely. I'm super impressed with that. I also quite like that it comes up with this help option uh, on quite a few of the pages and things that are built into KDE. So if you click on that, uh, it kind of takes you to, I guess, I, I guess it's built in, I don't know. So let's go full screen that. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, it just gives you all the information about various different things. So if you wanted to mess about with desktop effects, desktop session, energy saving, font management, there is loads and loads of information in here. Anyway, back to the Pi 400, but I was just wanted to show how well this works on the Pi 400 and also how I'm enjoying it as an OS. It is really running great for me. And as you can see, I've got loads of things open at the moment and, uh, and it's still running absolutely fine. So part of this video uh, was from this comment from, now I always thought this was pronounced Joaquin, um, but uh, I've just double checked and uh, it looks like uh, Google doesn't agree because this Joachim. Joachim is one option, uh, but I've also got this one here. Joachim. Joachim. So I've got two different options, um, but uh, thanks very much for the comment anyway. I just always appreciate comments and uh, it's an interesting talking point. Uh, so the Pi 400 is an epic fail. Why? Because it's still available for a decent price. That means there was a ton of unsold stock, and while all SBC and compute modules were sold out very quickly, the Pi 400 remains. So it's probably not a very desirable product on the market. I will not wonder if we see the depreciation of the Pi 400 soon after this crisis when the SBC and the compute module become available again. And it was an interesting point, um, and I don't know if it would be seen as a fail. As a device, I think it's excellent. Uh, it's also incredibly compatible with all the Pi 4 content that is already out there. Uh, and uh, a failure could be seen as, uh, so if a product doesn't sell enough, if it's not profitable, so as a company, I guess you would see that as a failure. I've reported in Pi News about um, the Pi 400 being used quite a lot in education, so maybe not so much for profit, but uh, but certainly going to a good cause. But uh, yeah, it, 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 it made me think about it, and you know, first of all, I was thinking, wow, it's not a failure, but, but then if it doesn't make money, um, I mean, there's, there's always two ways to look at things. The other day I was looking at this story, um, I was at work actually, and um, I do video calls at my work, and in between waiting for customers to contact me, uh, sometimes I'll look things up. And I was speaking to a gent about, uh, he wanted to buy a, a current laptop for crypto. And I said he's unlikely to make the money back on uh, the sort of laptop that he was looking for on crypto because the cost of electricity is going up and, and all sorts of things. But anyway, I after I spoke to him, I thought, oh, I'll have a look because I've got an M1 Mac, which is super efficient, very powerful. And uh, yes, you can make a tiny amount of money on it or uh, at old electricity prices. And obviously it depends. This was, I guess, in the States because it's dollars. Um, but... Uh, really worth looking at uh, when you think you have a view on something and it's good to be swayed by other people it's good to be open-minded confirmation bias is a big thing uh, where you kind of you go in a direction it might be ios or android and, and you kind of you just want to confirm that what you think is right and that the other side is wrong i try to stay open-minded to it i've got android and ios and I like both of them, uh, but I also do like having a bit of a debate with my friend who's mad about Android and uh, and I'm big on iOS and we just have a bit of friendly banter about it and it is, for me, it's enjoyable. But in this story, there was nothing brought up about the environmental impact and then someone brings that up and, and the author puts it in the story. Have a look through it because it's really interesting, but there's some great points in there and one thing about sport which was very interesting. Uh, and there's, there's always two ways to look at things. And uh, anyway, I've flown off on a tangent. Let's get back to the Pi 400. I mentioned earlier on I would talk about price and availability. So uh, Amazon is obviously a place that loads of people get them from. Um, Pi 4s have been very, very expensive in Amazon. But in the UK, Pi 400 $74.99 at the moment in stock. Uh, some of these kits might be good value because you're going to need a power adapter and the official one is very good. Also, we have in the US, 107.95, so still pretty reasonable, uh, 108.99 there. In Deutschland, we have 83 euros, which is pretty decent. Um, that's a good price. 
But uh, in France, not so good. Uh, 139 euros, which is a bit of a discrepancy. I mean, it might be different sellers that are doing them. But uh, yeah, very good price in Germany. The way to check official sellers is to go to the raspberrypi.com site. Just click on Raspberry Pi. Uh, and then pick the model that you're interested in and it will give you a list of loads and loads of sellers so actually it comes up with uh, Pi 400 there but that's a kit so if we want Pi 400 on its own click more info and you can see here buy now because I'm in the UK it will work that out uh, and it will show me the various different places you can get them from oh and at the moment it only mentions the Pi Hut which is uh, which is weird but if I click on Pi Hut so 66.90 uh, with 2 99 shipping, so under £70. Let me know what price you get in your country and uh, what official sellers are selling it. So the lack of a headphone socket on the Pi 400 is something that I didn't like at first, but actually it's very easy to get around it with a USB to 3.5mm sound card, and you can also use that for a mic input as well. And as long as you use a Bluetooth mouse and uh, a Bluetooth speaker or HDMI audio, you're not going to use up any extra USB sockets because you pretty much always have to plug in uh, a mouse or keyboard into a Pi 4. Um, the big thing is definitely the cooling, the fact that it's got a heatsink built in, the fact that you're already getting a decent keyboard with it as well, um, and uh, I like the fact that you can switch it off by pressing and holding the power button. Uh, it, uh, yeah, it is a great device, so let's see what it can run. So first up, I've got a 750 gig hard drive in, I've got Supreme Retro Pi on an SD card in there, uh, you can see I've got my Xbox controller adapter and my Xbox controller. So I've got thousands and thousands of games on here. Uh, and uh, if we launch something like, say, PSP, you can see all sorts of things in here. And here's a bit of Tekken 6. And you can see it's working fine. Here's Batacera. Uh, and I've got the ROMs on a 500 gig drive. And I've got the uh, program on 128 gig SD card. So loads of games to choose from. Let's go with a bit of Dreamcast. Yeah, working nicely. I do love this game. Oh, missed it. So this is Constacang's latest one, Android 12L, and I've just paired my Bluetooth speaker. So let's find a video and play that. There you go, so you can hear the audio is coming through fine. And if I drag down from the top, we get the notifications. And if we minimize that and drag up from the bottom, we get all the apps. So working nicely. I did have to change the, uh, the keyboard came up with NumLock on, so I did have to turn that off, but it's, it's working absolutely fine now. So BBC Sport, there you go, working well. This is Windows 11. Uh, I'm using my USB sound card for audio and you can see I'm running it from an M.2 drive. This is Fido S or Chrome OS running fine. And I wonder if GTA still works. GTA San Andreas, haven't tried this for a while. Well, it looks like it's all right still. Yeah, it's still working fine, that's good to see. Twister OS, uh, which is a great way of playing old Windows games and apps. Uh, it's got Wine built in and it is excellent. Pi Amiga 2 works absolutely fine and has well over 4,000 games and loads of other things related to Amiga. This is Monkajaro 1.2, which is a custom version of Manjaro and it has the best GameCube performance I've seen on a Pi. So let's try a bit of Tomb Raider. So the audio is pretty choppy, but uh, considering this is running on a Pi 400 with 4 gig of RAM, I think it's doing a pretty good job. Ubuntu Mate is also working absolutely fine. And my light gun game is working, but uh, I do need to reconfigure the sound because it's set up for my Pi 4. But uh, this is a great game and plays really well. Okay, so as you can see from that, compatibility is really, really good. I'm back on my main OS now, uh, and I want to show a few things from Thingiverse. And uh, there's a couple of things on here. So just move this to the side. 
This is a mechanical keyboard. I talked about a while ago when the Pi 400 first came out, that it would be really good to have various things underneath it. So raise it up a little bit, a bit like an Amiga or, or a Commodore 64 or something like that, where you've got more of the workings below the machine. And uh, the main one I think really is an SSD. I did talk about having a fan and maybe some SD card storage with the extra space that you had, um, but the fan isn't needed. The, the heatsink is so good in a Pi 400 that there's just no need for that. Uh, the other one that's in here is this one here, which is a Pi 400 enclosure. And you can see if you don't want to use it with a keyboard, if you want to use it as a very compact computer, uh, then you can do, you could mount that under a desk or something so it's hidden away and just have a monitor up on the top uh, and use a separate mouse and keyboard of your choice. So loads and loads of options. I'll put Amazon links in the description uh, for the Pi 400 if you choose to get one. Uh, the one other thing I wanted to talk about is when I first got my Pi 4, the thing that struck me was I wish I had a Pi 3B. And the only reason for that was that when it first came out, nothing was compatible, nothing ran on it. Raspberry Pi OS ran on it. I sort of scraped around and tried to get some games to work. I ended up using web browser based games. Uh, then I was doing a few things in Mednafen uh, because they were the only things that would work out the box. Everything needed to be adapted over to the Pi 4. So yes, a Pi 5 uh, at some point will come out. It could be a long time. I would say if you're really interested in the Pi, probably better off to buy a Pi 400 or maybe buy a Pi 4B if you can get one. Um, but uh, yeah, for a while, the Pi 5 won't be that compatible until all the community comes on board and they just make everything work. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.